So, Boracay is one of the most visited and popular islands in the Philippines. However, over the years, there has been a lot going on. From closures to typhoons, today we will explore the history, the latest news, and what it is like living on Boracay Island as a foreigner. Hand on heart, Barakai is near perfection. During my time living on the island, it felt like I was in heaven. The golden sand was pure, the water was crystal clear, and the coconut trees swaying in the background made it feel like paradise. However, during 2018, it was determined that Barakai Island was to close for a total of six months due to environmental reasons. This impact was heavy, and it was estimated that 20% of the total tourism industry at the time came from the island. Later in the year, the island reopened, but sadly, COVID-19 soon followed, so it's not been the easiest time for Barakai. Fast forward to today, at the time of recording, we have a rising typhoon. I got in touch with a local this morning, and this is what she told me. So it all started when there's power shortage around 9 in the morning, and then winds and also sands in, um, are so strong that coming into your face. Actually, during that time, some restaurants were closed. Some establishments were closed because of the power shortage as, as well. And it took around 12 hours of no power. Just some hotels were lucky, lucky enough to have generator, but some were not citizens or inform the people there that they should just stay at home. I've noticed that over the years, what normally happens is that airlines and ferry services often cancel before the impact, so normally those who are affected are already on the island. Nevertheless, if you plan to travel to Barakai Island, it's best to ease on the side of caution. The recent developments are also not good for locals. To put things in perspective, it has been suggested that the area has lost as much as 50 million pesos in potential income due to the typhoon, which shows us just how important the area is for tourism. Now, when it comes to living, there is already some really good information about the island, so let's look at things that you are not told about. So, one of the most important considerations if you're planning to travel to Barakai Island or live on the island is accommodation. Using Airbnb or an equivalent is a great idea for the first few days, but if you really want to find a beautiful but affordable place, head over to Facebook. Many accommodation owners don't have the time or wish to pay the hosting fees so you can find some great places on social media. However, this is best for long term, so if you're only staying for a few days or a week, then services like Airbnb are fantastic. With Barakai Island, when you want to pay less, it's not what you know, but who you know. Boracay has a few notable areas, including Station 1, 2 and 3. Station 1 is the area where many high-end accommodations and establishments are located. Station 2 is where many food places, bars and slightly cheaper accommodations can be found. Station 3 is a little bit more tranquil and quiet, and you will find some good priced accommodation in this area. In general, the island is near perfect, and it's a beautiful beautiful place to visit or to live, but it's not the best place if you are on a budget. There are many beautiful islands to live on across the Philippines, and I've spoken about many of those in this video. A link is in the description below. But Barakai, how much will it cost you? I lived on around $1,400 a month. Now, I lived a simple lifestyle, but for those who are more adventurous, you may wish to budget between $2,000 to $2,500 a month. Some can also live much lower than this. However, when I tried to do so, I found it very difficult simply because the expenses on the island were much higher than what I was experiencing in other places. Staying in accommodation near the beach 
I found to be the biggest expense. There are some nice places, but they are a little bit further away. So if you don't mind traveling, that is a great way to save a little bit of money. As you are the richest man in the world, you will be charged full price for most things, especially day tours and trips. So negotiation is always a good idea. Most expats don't live on the island. So it's a bit of a wild card doing a video on this topic, but whether you choose to travel or live on Barakai, you will have a great time. I've been fortunate to live on many islands across the Philippines and across Asia, and without a doubt, this island is the most beautiful place. 